no one has coached me as to how one should address an audience uh, who, as I speak, are present neither in space nor in time. I shall assume, however, that it will be all right if, like the radio announcer, I say, ladies and gentlemen of the movie tone audience. I am going to take this opportunity to discuss a question with regard to another very new development of science, which a great many people are asking nowadays. They ask, what is the future of television? Now that this long cherished dream of the art of communication has become a reality, how will it be used? Where? How much? As a matter of fact, no one knows the answer yet. And in the last analysis, it is going to be an economic one. Is the public willing to pay the price? Because it seems inevitable now, the television is going to cost a great deal more than the telephone. The young man of the future, when he calls up his best girl, will have to face a new demand upon his pocketbook. He will have to decide whether the sight of her pretty face is worth to him five or six times the sound of her dulcet voice. If he decides that it is, and the public decides the same way, then the future of television as an adjunct to the telephone is assured. As yet, no one knows how important it is to have sight as well as sound in a message. From a strictly utilitarian standpoint, it is probably true that 90% or more of the message which can be conveyed from one person to another can be conveyed by sound. But we must not make the mistake as has often been made in technical science, of assuming that because something is small in quantity, it is unimportant. In chemistry, catalyzers. In nutrition, vitamins were long overlooked because there wasn't very much of them. Now, we don't know whether the expression of a man's face is in the nature of a vitamin or a catalyst. It may be. It may well be that in the future, no business deal will be concluded until the parties literally see eye to eye. We don't know as yet what the answer to this question will be. But one of the earliest problems in television is going to be to determine by service trial just how important it is to have the smile with the voice. certainly a novel experience to speak to an audience which, as I speak, is neither here nor anywhere else. I suppose the proper way is to say, ladies and gentlemen of the movie tone audience. They uh, expect me to say something about television. Well, I'll take the occasion to answer a question which many people ask. They ask, <coughs> what is the future of television? Well, the answer is, it depends on what price the public is willing to pay. If the young man of the future, when he calls up his best girl, is willing to pay five or six times as much to see her pretty face as to hear her dulcet voice, then I think the future of television as an adjunct to telephony is assured. 